Are you tired of taking cliche tour shots while traveling? Luckily, you don't have to anymore. My name is Mark Hemmings, and I'm an internationally recognized photographer and photography instructor. And in this video, I'll share with you six amazing types of travel photos that you can take that you'll be proud to show your friends and family back home. And I'll share all of my considerations for composing my example shots and exactly which camera settings I use to get them. Okay, let's head to beautiful San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, and we can begin. Have you ever taken a photo inside a city of a famous landmark or a beautiful historic building, but the picture just didn't turn out the way you wanted to? Well, that's quite normal. A lot of my students have that problem. However, there is a solution. Now, currently we're at around noon. The light is harsh and it's coming from behind this church behind me. I want to photograph the church because it's quite beautiful. I'm going to take a test picture and let's see what happens. Okay, now as you can see, we have a kind of a, an undramatic picture. There's a lot of blue haze in the picture. The shadows are very deep. And specifically, the church is not illuminated. Now, one of the big problems is backlighting. The light is coming from behind the church. That means that the church facade is sort of uh, in a dark shade and has a bluish tone, which really doesn't look good. So, how do we fix that? Well, let's come back tonight and see what happens. Okay, we're now at dusk. The sun has set and the colors of the lights are everywhere. It's really great. Now keep in mind, we only have a half an hour window where we can actually get a shot where the sky brightness is equivalent to the brightness of the electric lights in the city or for example, on this church. Let's take a shot and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so as you can see, we have a really good balance between the sky and the lights on the church and the surrounding buildings. This is the perfect time to photograph. Now the nice thing is we absolutely lost all those deep shadows that we had in the former picture. Also, we don't have that sort of uh, ugly blue haze and the church is looking really good and it's not in the shadow. This is the advantage of waiting for different lighting. Okay, I'm here in the same spot, this time early morning, and I'm gonna take advantage of side lighting. Let me take a test shot to show you. Okay, so when the light is coming from the side, we have a really nice effect. What happens is the sun sort of rakes along the surface of whatever you're photographing, allowing a three-dimensionality, sort of a texture effect where the side light, the nice, soft, wonderful illumination from the sun sort of wraps around the texture of the building. It's really good for photography. When photographing landmarks like this church, side lighting will be better than backlighting. When you have backlighting, you have a situation where you don't have any real illumination of the main subject, and you sort of have that bluish haze that doesn't look good. Now, just by the way that this church is oriented, I can't get front lighting. However, front lighting is pretty good. It works well. Also, cloudy days produce a soft effect, which will allow you to get a nice soft image. So don't forget, time of day is so important in photography. Each part of the day has a different value for your incredible photographs. A really great street photography tip is to photograph people when they're sitting on park benches. There's a really interesting dynamic when you're in a park and people are sitting down, there's so much emotion, whether it be one person or two people. Regardless of whether it's a happy emotion or possibly a sad or lonely emotion, this is a really great place to capture the everyday lives of people in their urban environments. But that's not all. You can also photograph people outside of parks. Take, for example, really massive scale backgrounds of buildings and they're sitting enjoying talking to each other. There are so many ways to capture people unobtrusively, but still get amazing dramatic results. Now I have a great example here. I saw this couple and uh, I really have no idea what they were talking about, but there was clearly some form of emotion going on between them. And I don't really want to be in their face, so I thought, well, a good 
uh, way around that is to shoot from behind. And I was able to get a couple different shots that convey a certain emotion, and you, the viewer, can sort of fill in the blanks. But this is a really good way to be unobtrusive, to not be in people's faces, but still get a really cool narrative, a good story to your street photography. Now, about camera settings. A long lens is really helpful because you don't know how far you will be from the person or the people you're photographing. Also, aperture priority at your lowest aperture f-stop number possible. For example, with this lens, it's f2.8. And when you choose a lower f-stop number, you have a faster shutter speed when you're in aperture priority. And that will give you a far greater chance of having a sharp picture. Also, because we have a lot of shade here, my lens has optical stabilization. Now this goes by many different names, but most zoom lenses have this where the motor inside the lens, or sometimes in the camera, will keep you from having a shaky picture. So take a look to see if your lens has that as well. And that's about it. A steady hand and just look for the picture, look for the story, and you will get amazing results. Negative space is such an excellent way to really force your viewer's attention into the main subject. Now, negative space is where you have a majority of the picture or the composition that's blank, that has no detail. Take, for example, the picture that we have here. I have my friend stand in, and she is gonna be very small in the picture with a lot of empty negative space, but it's gonna work out so well. Let me give you an example shot. Okay, put your tiara on and off. Okay, so now take a look at this shot. As you can see, there's so much empty space. Now normally we would have our main subject really large in the picture. However, when you're dealing with negative space, you get this artistic effect where all of the tension eventually goes right down to the main subject. It's a really cool way to add an artistic flair to your portraiture. Give it a try. Now, when you're out on a photo shoot, you can't go wrong by choosing windows as your subject. Windows are so fabulous. In fact, a lot of people get collections of windows whenever they go on vacation. Now, there is a big problem though. A lot of people have no idea how to compose properly to get a good window shot. I would like to share with you a couple really great techniques to get that done. First of all, there are two best practices for getting window photos. One is completely straight on. Make sure that you're not to a little bit to the left or the right, but you have a complete accuracy, your vertical lines are straight, and the window is dead center in your frame. Now, if you can't photograph dead straight on, well, that's okay. Choose a 45 degree angle for your camera. This will also work out really well. Those are the two options when you're at street level. Now, a lot of people say, well, what about photographing really interesting windows that are at a second story? Well, I would suggest not doing the 45 degree angle. In fact, I would only suggest one method. It's being as far away from the window as possible. That's usually on the other side of the street. And again, photographing dead straight on. But here's the problem. Whenever you're photographing up at a window or any architectural element, what happens is we have a sort of distortion where vertical lines appear not straight. And, you know, programs like Photoshop can fix that. However, a good way to get around that is to actually zoom in a little bit if you have a zoom lens so that you avoid that wide angle distortion that often plagues architectural photography. So, just to recap, if you have a second story, move back, zoom in, and get that window dead straight on. Now, if you can get people in your windows, all the better. That's the ultimate combination of architecture, of windows, and street photography. It's fantastic. Now, about camera settings, anything goes, pretty much. Whatever your favorite is, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, it'll all work. Now, my next tip is a favorite amongst travel photographers. Whenever you're in a different city, maybe you see a really great church or a historic building, you usually can't use your tripod but you may see incredible ceilings. Well, I have a tip for you. It's very easy to get a good, sharp, shake-free picture without using a tripod simply by putting your camera on the ground. Now, what I'd like you to do is envision the beautiful ceiling. Place your camera so that the camera is pointing up, 
completely under the center of the ceiling area that you want to photograph. Now, you may want to remove your camera strap for this technique just to make it a bit easier and to be a little bit less conspicuous. Now, with regards to what settings, I advise aperture priority and also anywhere from f5.6 to f8 just to make sure that you get all of the church ceiling good and sharp. Now the real key to this trick is using your three, five, or 10 second timer. Most all cameras allow you to have a self timer to take the picture without you touching the camera. Now, why would you want that? Well, we wanna make sure that there's no shake when you're pressing the shutter release button. So all you need to do, put your camera on a timer, press the button when the camera is on the floor and just back up just a little bit so that you are not in the picture. Keep in mind you want to have a wide angle lens or at most a 50 millimeter lens because a zoom lens will probably not get as much of the expanse that you want. Have you ever admired the fantastic street photography that you see on Instagram or other social media but feel too self-conscious to photograph people on the street who you don't really know? Or perhaps you legitimately have concerns about the sort of ethical dilemma of photographing people without asking their permission first. Well, I have a solution for you. I'll show you how to take a stunning street photo without the subject even noticing it. So I'd like to give you some considerations for how I get this type of street photography. One, I like to have people walking past me at a 45 degree angle. That's the point where I'd like to take the picture. However, it's very important to always choose a background that you think looks interesting. I love this yellow wall. I think it'll look really good for street photography. Also, burst mode. I like to use burst mode to get the right stride. For example, I want to make sure the person actually looks like they're walking in a very natural way. Burst mode will do that. Okay, I'm gonna take a few test shots and let's see what happens. Okay, now I'm really happy with this shot. I'd like to explain why. First of all, I don't see the person's face, so we have that covered. We don't have to worry about issues of posting this picture to Facebook or Instagram, that's no problem. Plus, I feel comfortable I haven't invaded someone's privacy. But the real value is that I have the person walking into the picture space, there's more space in front of him than behind, but I also have a very cool shadow. Now, my burst mode worked great. Let me show you the three pictures that I took in burst mode. As you can see, this one that we have up on screen right now is clearly the best because the stride looks interesting. There's sort of a, a narrative in his walk and we have a very interesting shadow. So those are a few considerations for you to use when you're wanting to take street photography that is sort of uh, respectful. Now, one thing to keep in mind, it may take you a while to wait for the actual shot because you can't control people walking down the street. That's all right. Just sit, keep shooting, and you'll get the shot. Also, I used a zoom lens on this just because it's easier and it allows me a certain amount of distance from the subject, which ultimately allows both parties to feel more comfortable. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. This video was shot in stunningly beautiful San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. I've been coming here for 10 consecutive years. And no matter how many times I've been here, something always pulls me back to Mexico. Perhaps it's because nowhere else in the world will you find so much color in the streets. It seems like entire cities were painted by an artist who was working on a vibrant painting. It's a photographer's dream. There are wonderful rooftop restaurants with stunning overlooks where you can see all of the city. And as the sun is setting, entire cities are filled with warm light that almost seems magical. And best of all, Mexicans really know how to enjoy themselves. Strolling around the streets in the evening, you'll see singers, performers, and artists everywhere, all having a great time. Mexico is truly a magical place, but you won't see much of that magic on a typical beach vacation. You have to get off the beaten path to experience the authentic Mexico. And that's why I want to invite you to join me in Mexico for the vacation you'll remember for a lifetime. Click the link below this video and you'll find all of the information you need to know about this vacation. But please don't delay, there are limited spots in this adventure and they're filling up fast.
So click on the link below and I'll see you on the next page.